Well, joining me now live in our Lagos studio to give more insight into the Nigerian oil and gas sector, as well as the infrastructure and also promoting a better gas system. I have with me uh, oil and gas policy management consultant, Michael Fanero. Good to have you on the show today. And compliment of the season for the festival. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yes. yes. Now, let's start first and foremost with where we left things off with our previous conversation we had earlier on talking about Nigeria maximizing her gas resources. Now, as at uh, earlier in the year, we had new targets set for the year 2025 as well as 2030, looking at about 210 trillion uh, cubic feet of gas and about 220 come uh, the year 2030. Please throw more light on some of these areas you say we should explore. All right, so um, Nigeria today has a proven reserve of 203 TCF, trillion uh, cubic feet of, uh, of, of gas. And that means we have, the largest, uh, uh, we have the largest gas reserve in Africa and the 90 in the world. So we are in number nine. World. However, with this uh, huge reserve that we have, we have really not really, uh, we have not uh, explored, you know, mm. the gas resources have been underutilized, it's been untapped, it's been underproduced. And something that's even been wasted uh, with the ferry that we, we do every time. So this uh, has been going on for a while, for about six decades now. We have been, we have been unsuccessful. It actually, we this um, resources that we have. And these are due to many, many reasons. And uh, one of these issues is uh, the lack of, uh, I don't want to say lack of uh, a framework. It's not the implementation of some of these frameworks. There have been a lot of frameworks that, have been, that uh, our policymakers have come up with. Uh, however, we've not been able to see this through. We've not been able to implement some of these things. So it has uh, prevented us from actually uh, maximizing this uh, uh, potential that, uh, that we have. And one of these things, uh, another thing, is, like you mentioned, your opening remark is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So the infrastructure is lacking. Uh, the commercial framework for is lacking as well. So uh, until you have a, 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 the commercial framework, a good commercial framework before people now begin to want to produce the, produce this gas and again have assurance that when they produce this they're going to get uh, money Banks paid for it her. and again that's on the on the one part then the second one the infrastructure is that even if you produce it today you need infrastructure to gather the gas when they are produced from the feed they need infrastructure to, to treat this gas mm. you need infrastructure to, to process the gas you need infrastructure to store it to transport and distribute to the end customer so as long as all these are missing in the value chain so you can't mm. maximize the the resources so in other got. words, you now say that with the bottlenecks we have in terms of storage, transportation, and a whole lot more they've raised here, that looking at a figure of 210 trillion uh, cubic feet, and then by the year 2030, looking at 220, do you think it's a conservative target, or you think we'll be able to beat that? No, you know, the, the, we, we have the gas, of, uh, we have the gas here, and even the potential that we have, says we have about mm -hmm. of gas, so we have about three times of what we have even is, is profound. So, however, it's not like I said earlier, it's not, it's not for lack of trial. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I sympathize with all the, uh, some of the actors, uh, the policy makers. You know, people looking from outside, these people are not trying, they, are not, they don't even know how to do, they're thinking through. However, no, and that's why I say I sympathize with them because I've uh, been a consultant myself. I've actually consulted on some of these programs, the initiative, the master plan, the gas industrialization agenda, all those are in place. We have the policy as well mm -hmm. that developed uh, by the last minister, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mbe, uh, Ibe, uh, Kachiku. So we have all this thing, but what we just need is just to now, uh, uh, is just to follow through to, to, to implement. And like I said, most of these actors, it's not that they don't want to implement, but again, the Nigerian system actually, you know, doesn't allow this to thrive. So I would just say in one word that most of this plan and objective that they had before, Nigeria happened to them. Now, if you're going to create some level of blueprint policy framework directions you think to take, what areas do you think we have to focus on in terms of developing a plan to help maximize the benefits that we have from the abundance of this natural resource we have in the country? Okay, so um, we, we already have, so I, I'm not sure we need to create something new. Uh, the master plan was developed. Uh, we have the, the blueprint for gas industrialization. The plan for implementation. Yeah, so, and all. so that's all right. we, have the, we have the gas policy, and now we have the PIB. So uh, though there are still issue around the gas policy, the, the PIB not in in with, uh, mm. with the with the with the gas policy. So I believe uh, with this, if these are implemented, which are already which government has actually started implementing, and uh, you mentioned the integrated gas uh, and the facility that's going to be launched tomorrow, which I think we, we we have more time to talk about it. I think it's a step in the right direction as well. And from what we've seen uh, in recent time, government has actually started. Uh, some activities towards that. So, uh, the uh, recently the AKK, that's Ajakuta 
Kaduna Kano pipeline was was launched, mm. which is part of the implementation of the infrastructure in the in the in the in the, in the gas master plan. Uh, that that was done. Uh, but recently, the government, the the president launched the gas expansion program. We have the gas automotive. Uh, program that was launched uh, in terms of using uh, gas to in place of uh, of PMS that is uh, another one uh, you have the EPS so that the EPS is the Scrabble Lagos pipeline we have EPS 1 then mm -hmm. government is com com completing the S2 which is going to bring gas travels to Lagos to West African gas pipeline then the other one which is very critical infrastructure is the OB3 that's the uh, Obricom, Obiafo, uh, Oben, Obiafo, Obricom uh, uh, popular gas so which is supposed to bring stranded gas from the east to the market in the east and the west and again supply uh, to the north. So this, I believe, uh, is going to be completed soon. So when all these things are completed, and I, I think we are in the right direction and with this kind of gas handling facility that is going to be launched uh, tomorrow or next, I, I think the government is in the, in the, the right direction. You seem optimistic this is creating a clear picture in terms of consolidated efforts as we mark this year as the year of gas? Yes, yeah, so, well, I, I think the, the minister have actually gone beyond uh, declaring this year as year of gas to a mm. uh, decade as, as, as year of gas. So looking at the, at the integrated facility that, uh, that uh, NMPC, MPDC, is going to be launching uh, tomorrow, tomorrow mm. uh, is a very, very uh, a great one. Uh, first is that uh, it, this, uh, this ordinarily would have been flared. Mm. Currently, uh, we use only about 15% locally. Uh, we use about 40 to, uh, to LNG. Uh, about 50% is other flared. Or injected for, for for production. So mm -hmm. the gas that uh, the the facilities will is actually the gas that ordinarily would have been flared. So it's converting waste uh, into, in, into, into, into wealth. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, some of the benefits or what's going to is that it will allow MPC to meet this uh, domestic supply obligation. Uh, in there, it's going to help reduce the flaring. So probably there will be flaws. This gas would have been flared. And it's going to provide links for gas pro for production. So the gas that is going to be provided there is going to use power production from from the project. This gas has been coming to the power plant. Then there's going to be LPG. So there's going to be about 330 metric tons of LPG production per, per day. So that's, that's very important for that small plant. And again, there's going to be propane produced. There's going to be concentrate uh, produced. So all this one actually uh, set in the direction in terms of water. What else do you think we might have in terms of implementation of uh, activities, especially as we have this? Uh, gas handling facility coming to bear starting tomorrow because it's one thing to have a fantastic document or inauguration or the launch of projects it's another thing to have it meet all of the targets and excel what challenges do you think we ought to look out for and then work twice as hard to counter i think the key challenge that is actually uh, developing and building this infrastructure, which I think now that challenge is over because with the launch of the of the infrastructure, it means that the, this uh, gas facility has, has been built. Mm. So I would rather look at what are the benefits, what are the economic benefits I'm going to look at instead of looking at the challenges. Uh, by the time we look, see the benefit that we're going to get from air, there it, 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 it's enough for us to see. So we don't see the challenge because some of the challenges that could be, they are operational in nature. And I believe NMPC, NPDC is capable. What of new the operational do you also expect in line with this so um, so let's look at the I'm going to look at it in different in different aspects mm -hmm. in terms of the revenue generation capability for for NMPC this is very huge so uh, based on the capacity of the of, of the plant at full at full utilization it process about 200 million of, of, of gas day so from that 200 million scope of gas per day that uh, is good we are going to have like 82 million scope of mm -hmm. lean gas that's dry gas for power generation. And what that means is about 366 megawatts of electricity, electricity. per day. Mm. And a million scope of gas is around $2.5 for a million. So if you look at a million scope, uh, 82 million scope, multiplied by $2.5 uh, in a day, and go to year, that's about $75 million just from the dry gas that we use for electricity. And then you, if you look at LPG. The LPG that we produce for the plant, uh, the plant is going to be uh, turning out about 330 tons of uh, LPG per day. And that is an equivalent of about 26,000 cylinders, 12.5 mm -hmm. kg cylinder. So it's about 20,000 cylinders of gas per day. So if you look at the impact on how yeah, so if, you look at, if you look at the value of revenue, mm -hmm. so that's in a year, let's even say they work like 320 days. So that's about 25 billion naira. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Then again, there's going to be propane. There's going to be condensate. So, uh, conservatively, I think NMPC and NPDC will make about $300 million per annum in terms of revenue to them. Now, let's look at the linkage to the economy. 
Now, we are going to look at job creation. So there's direct and indirect job creation. So people are going to work on the, on, on the plant. They are going to be skilled. They are going to be unskilled people who probably do not have this livelihood before. Now, with this, and they are, so that means they can, they, 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 you know, they, their level prosperity has, has changed. Mm -hmm. And I think indirect as well, there are some people who are going to be providing food for these people working. There's hotel real estate. With, it will generate real, real, real estate around that place. There's going to be cylinder manufacturing mm -hmm. as well. There's going to be LPG retail. So you, by the time you look at this, you look at direct and indirect impact. You see the linkage to the economy. And uh, if you look at then, look at it in terms of LPG penetration as well. Mm. Uh, currently, Nigeria is very, in terms of LPG consumption per capita, we are just 3 kg, which is very, very low, low. in terms of the uh, average in, in Africa. Mm. So in Edo State, based on the, uh, on the data that I have, only 100,000 homes in Edo State have uh, used LPG mm. as of today. So imagine the kind of LPG that is coming out and is very close to people. So that means a lot of people are going to be using LPG. It's going to be cheaper for them. And again, you, it's going to go because currently the only source of our LPG is either we import or we get from LNG. Mm. So, but now that we are going to be having this one as well, it's going to help with the penetration of, of the LPG. So, there, there are quite a lot. And this is just, just from a small facility. So, imagine by the time we begin to build Multiply, bigger facilities. So, exactly. you can begin to see the effect that it's going to have on the, on the economy of the country. Definitely. And then the global front is also looking at intensifying efforts towards cleaner energy but you also talked about uh deepening our domestic gas penetration at this point in time as well let's look at our local consumption here still quite small we are also looking at the auto gas policy as well how do we now create a clear cut plan okay. in terms of simplifying the processes of how to get this done and then the cost okay. bringing it down Okay. to the cheapest, barest minimum. All right. The fact that the local consumption of gas is low is not because there is no market. It's more or less because of the infrastructure, like I mentioned. It's because the supply is not adequate or the structure is not there. So, and this is one of the, this is one of the uh, issues. This is one of the problems that we solve now in terms of the processing and treatment and uh, in terms of infrastructure. So, like I mentioned earlier, the AKK gas pipeline, the mm. OB3 gas pipeline. So, when we have all this infrastructure in place, we have solved one problem. And again, the enabling legislation. The PIB, we expect that PIB is going to be passed and it's going to actually uh, provide a, a, a clearer a commercial framework for, for gas uh, production and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, mm. and sales. So we expect that all this one will actually make gas uh, usage in country uh, higher. Uh, but beyond that, uh, gas for me is the best way, is, is our surest way to economic prosperity as we are currently. So for the industrialization agenda, which is one thing for me, I'm really, I'm really particular about it. We need to implement because it's opportunities for us to create geographically dispersed economic growth and development. So imagine we have a fertilizer plant, a petroleum plant, ammonia plant, as the power industry be in, in, in those grounds. I can now, you know, this provides you with a lot of raw material, all those that are ported. So you can now sell material to the textile industry in Canada. You can sell to Jamaica, sell to Ibadan. So instead of people clothing in Lagos now, everybody wants to come to Lagos, wants to go to Abuja, you know, people can now disperse people because there are a lot of economic activity happening all over the country. So that we allow us, you just read the budget, now look at the, the, the budget deficit that we have. Mm. We, have no, we have no reason uh, having a deficit budget in this country with what we've had. So I believe gas provides a very good way for us uh, in terms of economic prosperity. Mm. And talk about uh, the siting of this multi-million dollar project now and the impact it would have on the host community as well as surrounding communities. But there seems to be a deficit of trust where we have large resources cited or we have some of these uh, big projects cited for the fact that uh, it's not as it hasn't yet translated to the best of relationships in terms of the level of development in those areas versus how much is generated from there and then for the greater good of the economy. Now, how do you think we ought to manage the in terms of the host communities and the surrounding areas and then still staying very closely to the agenda, cleaner energy, ensuring that we are taking the best possible approaches and practices to reduce any sort of negative impact. Okay, so one of, one of, for me, one of the immediate impact of this to the, or to the uh, immediate uh, uh, community is that now we, this is with this pollution. Like I said, this would have been flared we like contribute to carbon emission in the atmosphere. So I believe we are going to have a clean environment. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of uh, the, the environment, now the PIB specified what's going to in it. So I believe 
in the life of this also operate for like in fact in the life of this, the host community bill uh, uh, will be passed part of the idea to deal with the issue with the community. But again, what I the host community will enjoy and our advice is that some of these unskilled uh, labor that be required uh, should be given to the community. So I did to that that then a sense of belonging. There are people going to be providing food, going to be providing, food, going to be providing yeah. services, sand, whatever it is, they are going to be conveyors of, of, of this subject. So they must have them that is, is a joint relationship because it's a mutual relationship and benefit. From, from this as well as the that I mentioned the other time. So, well, I think like there's opportunities for them for job. What is the larger transfer? This is frontier for Nigeria. Is, is it frontier? No, 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 no really, because we, they, we, there have been uh, uh, gas gas uh, treatment plants before. But, but again, we have evolution yeah, but of again, processes this, yeah, and much so, more. Which I think, because this is going to be operated uh, uh, locally, so this provides opportunity for technology uh, transfer for our people. And again, I, I believe that this is just the, the, the beginning. This is the beginning, and we need to now to the next step of developing the gas industry. Because the gas industry has you know, never not seen the light. It's a mm -hmm. sixteen billion dollar investment opportunity. And we are supposed to have the fertilizer plant. We I do then of Saudi Arabia was supposed to be here. Nagajuna from India was supposed to be supposed to be there. So in those years, like five or six, seven years ago, that has started. By now, you know, how much is generated? So scenario affects investor confidence. That so yeah, it, it does affect investor confidence because then I know that the the the, the discussion has gone. Far with this investor, but unfortunately, mm. uh, Nigeria happened to the project. So they, this it does. But again, uh, so we can reverse this. Uh, we have done one now, and by the time we show the genuineness uh, with uh, enable legislation, and we show that we're really serious, I'm sure we can still invest because better is not investor know that they're going to make money. They'll come around. As you can see, Nigeria has been as optimistic yeah. about this projected here tomorrow. What's your last word now in terms of our conclusion? Beyond the integrated gas handling facility, what do you think Nigeria needs in terms of going forward with our gas potential? I, if, what, oh, for me, the key thing is that we need to use the gas that we have to develop this country and is to make us an industrial nation. So we must make sure that we make Nigeria a non disputed gas orb in, mm. in Africa. Mm. Um, look at uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, so that's the, that's the gas industrial park. It's about 20 kilometers. You know how long 20 kilometers? Mm. That's why they, they are they are, they are industrial park. And today, when you talk about Petrika, talk about anything, you talk about Saudi. And then Saudi has more than us. What is Tobago? Trinidad and Tobago is just 9.2 cm, which is just like 4 percent of what they are. But gas has been and has propelled their GDP growth. And again, today, they are the largest exporter of ammonia and methanol. They produce about 50 percent of the world, uh, the world, uh, world uh, uh, export. So you can see that that, that from 4 percent of what we have. So imagine us having so, uh, that use. So by the time we start about 2, Three industrial, uh, industrial, industrial right there. you can see the, 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 mm. the potential that we have. We will not be having all this budget <laughs> that we, we just, and I believe that the prospect is vast yeah. indeed, and yeah. we just have to see a stronger implementation to drive as much as possible in terms of nets from the resources we have in country. Thank you very much for your time at the show today, Michael Fanera. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, tomorrow